Hi and welcome back to Maths Class. Today we're looking at collecting data. And when I mean what are we going to do with collecting data, we're not discussing things like writing questions or preparing surveys. But once I have some data, how do I record it and how do I organize it in order to make sense of it? So that's what we're doing today. And there are key, two really main key skills that we're looking at today. The first one is collating our data into a frequency table. And the second one is representing our data in two ways. We're going to use a dot plot and we're going to use a stem plot, which we'll also call a stem and leaf plot. It's the same thing. So let's just start with an example. I have a survey of 27 people who were asked how often they drove their car yesterday. And these are the results. So you can see people use their cars quite a lot. I don't think this is during lockdown, this questionnaire. So we need to draw a frequency table to summarize the data and then represent it as a dot plot. So I've quickly drawn my frequency table, although I haven't put any numbers in yet. Now X represents these numbers, okay? And then my tally is how many times each number comes up. And my frequency uh, is when, once I've done my tally, I'm gonna count how many times each number came up. So I, first I need to think about what numbers go in here. So if I just scan the data, I can see that I've got zeros and ones. They're all whole numbers. I don't have anything with a digit, with two digits, so it doesn't go up to 10. In fact, the biggest number I can see is six. So for my X's, I'm gonna have zeros, ones, twos, threes, fours, fives, and sixes. Then I just go through and I mark off my tally. I've got, hang on, I've got a two here, so I'll mark off a two, a one, a two, a zero, a three, another three, Okay, I've filled in my tally part of my table. Now, the only reason I do it in this way is I don't really know what number I'm gonna end up with. The other way I could do it is just scan the data and count the zeros, one, two, three. I can see there are three zeros. Scan the data for ones, one, two, three, four, five. And that does match up with my tally. So there are a couple of different ways I can do this. So I'll just keep filling in my frequency. That's eight, six, three, one, and one. Now, to make sure I haven't made a mistake, and it's very easy to, mis to make a mistake, what I do is I add all these numbers up. I know from the question that I started with 27 people. So let's make sure I've ended up with a grand total of 27. So five and three, that's eight, 16, 22, 25, 26, 27. That is correct. That's what I wanted. So that's my frequency table. The next thing I need to do is the dot plot. So I'm gonna make a dot plot down the bottom of the page. So I've prepared my dot plot number line here. I've just drawn a little number line and I've put all my categories underneath. So if I didn't have numbers here and I had categories, uh, I could write that. But as it is, I've got numbers and they count for my categories. So then my dot plot is really just like another way of doing a tally. How many zeros did I get? I've got three. Next to one, I've got five. I've got eight twos. Okay, so one of the things to notice is that my dots are pretty much lined up. If there's only one, all the ones line up across. All the twos more or less line up across. The threes line up. The fours, the fives, six, seven, and eight, okay? So also, these are evenly spaced. I didn't just squish these in because I saw I was getting near my other thing here. I tried to keep the gap between any two vertical dots as even as I, as I could. So what that does is it gives me a visual image of the shape of the data. I can see at a glance without having to read the numbers that there are more twos than anything else and that there are more ones and threes on either side, right? And that I've got this kind of hill shape up and down. So I can start seeing the shape 
of the way the numbers are distributed. This is called the distribution, the shape of the way the numbers are distributed. Okay, so what we've been practicing so far then is we've looked at collating data into a frequency table and we've done a dot plot. Okay, now we're going to do another frequency table example because sometimes it's going to look a little bit different. In example two, the age of 30 patients at a medical clinic was recorded and the results are here. And I need to summarize the results in a frequency table. Now, if you'll notice in this table, I had six categories. Sorry, actually I had seven if I count zeros. But if I look at this data, it's getting pretty spread out. Um, I've got an 82 here and I've got a six here. So I'm going to have an awful lot of um, categories if I leave them all spread out. And I'm certainly not going to count individual numbers. I'm not gonna count how many sixes how many sevens, how many eights, how many nines, because then I would end up with 82 rows because my largest number is 82. Where is it? I've lost it. It's in there somewhere. There it is, 82. So what I'm gonna do is I'm going to group my numbers and I'm just gonna put them in categories. So if I look at my X column, which is the age, I'm going to have from 0 to 9, I'm going to have from 10 to 19, from 20 to 29, and so on. And now I'm going to tally up my numbers. So I've done my tally and now I'm going to write in my frequency. Okay, a couple of things to notice. This data is discrete. There's nothing in between nine and 10. There's nothing in between 29 and 30 because my age is being um, recorded in a way that makes it look discrete. So I can be, um, 19 and three quarters, I'm still being recorded as being 19. But the main thing is I'm less than 20. So that's why I've gone to 19 here and I've started from 20 over here. I don't need to worry about the 19.5 because that's included in the 19. But what I had to be careful was here. I didn't go naught to 10 because then I wouldn't have known where to start here. I could have started at 11, but I'd rather go 10 to 19 so that everything with a a one in front is included here. Everything with a two in front is included here. If you put a 30 here on the end, you're likely to accidentally put your 30s in the wrong place. So just think about how you divvy up these and make sure they're all the same width. So from naught to nine, right? Nine minus naught, that gives me naught. 19 minus, sorry, that gives me nine. 19 minus 10, that gives me nine. 49 minus 40 gives me nine. 69 minus 60 gives me nine. All of these are the same width in terms of how many numbers might be included there. Okay, so that's the end of looking at uh, frequency tables. All right, I'm going to stop this video and start a new one when we start looking at stem and leaf plots.